Okay, good evening, welcome. We will call to order the meet, regular town council meeting for October 11th, 2023. Um, Jennifer, can you call the roll please? Rafti? Here. Council member Haskell? Here. Vice Mayor Warnikoff? Here. Mayor Elves? Here. Okay, our first, our next item will be oral communications. Uh, if you may, you may address the council on an item not on tonight's agenda. I will um, a quick a quick um, <clears throat> a little warning. The blue sky timer is not behaving properly, so what we will be doing is sharing screen so you can see when you're talking how much time you have. So I apologize for the inconvenience of not being able to see us, but um, that's just we want to make sure that the timer is visible. Uh, with that, I think we have one comment here in the schoolhouse. Uh, Carolyn Bertongan, go ahead. Is this working? Great. Thank you so much, Caroline Bertongan. Um, I felt it was important that I showed up in person to uh, express my disappointment with the response letter uh, to the jury duty regarding bike safety. I agree with San Mateo County and I don't agree with the responses that were submitted and I hope we can rectify this. This jury report has not been submitted to or discussed in our committee, EPTS. And um, it's on the agenda. We have so much going on. And this is, don't blame it on staff that is leaving. This has been going on for years. This morning, I helped a, a student cross the crosswalk by the Priory because we have not implemented the flag system and we still have to wait for improvements. It's a disaster, that driveway by the Priory. And this is not the first time. Residents have sent, said this over and over, but they're tired. This morning at the Trails Committee, we brought up safety again. Again, the same areas continue to be a problem. That's Willowbrook because of our generosity to all the other people from outside. Portola Valley, and we allow them to come and enjoy our trails. There is a huge issue with traffic safety. There's a huge is issue with safe routes to school. And um, I hope that the town manager is listening. Please come to our committees and listen. Um, I read your, or I listened to your experience for the picnic. Unfortunately, I was out of town. And it depends on what experience you had. Several people were very happy. But please read the reports from BBDS, the volunteers. They were not happy with the sheriff. They want the roads closed next year, like we had last year, because there were too many near call accidents. And so, it all depends what you hear and what you see, and we will continue to come to the meetings. We will continue to express our concerns. But please, you know, there's too much going on, and I hope that the town manager will help us solve the problems. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> on Zoom, we have a hand raised. Carter War, please go ahead. Hi, uh, so this is uh, Carter War. I'm a resident in town at 260 Wilbur Drive, and I also you know, am a local architect. I want to make sure that you can hear me. Yeah, we hear you, Carter. I sent an email. Uh, just before the, the town's current 50%. Carter, we're actually having trouble hearing you uh, now. Which uh, you went back uh, January to be on before. Okay. I was important. I'm. Carter, you're breaking up. I'm not sure why. Pose a question you know, regarding. 
uh, let me try a different white body. Um, I'll come down to uh, the, the council chambers. I'll be there in two minutes. Um, all right. If there are no other hands raised, we could consider taking the um, consent of continuing this item yes. of, uh, to after the consent agenda. Okay, we will uh, we'll take Carter's comment when he gets here. In the meantime, we'll move on to uh, item three, consent okay. agenda. Members of the public may comment on any item on the consent agenda. Yep. Only a council, like any council member, may pull an item from the consent agenda for discussion. Are there any public comments on the consent agenda? Uh, the schoolhouse is actually now empty except for the council and staff. Um, and I see no hands on Zoom. So um, maybe we'll give Carter one more minute here and uh, he can come talk. Oh, you know, um, does anyone want to pull an item? Uh, does anyone on the council want to pull an item on consent? I'm gonna pull the minutes just because I have a quick question. Okay, so 3A, anything else? Okay. I will take a motion then to approve items 3B and C. I move to approve 3B and C. Second. Okay, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Hefty? Aye. Councilmember Pasco? Aye. Vice Mayor Wernickoff? Aye. Mayor Alts? Aye. Okay, items 3 and B, 3B and C are approved. Uh, 3A, Sarah, comments in the minutes. Um, this is more of a question. I was absent from this meeting and I didn't know. I'm sorry, I should have asked this staff earlier. Um, for, on a vote, does it show that I'm absent typically or just I see, you know, it says uh, eyes are Alf, Hufty, and Taylor, and the nays are none. It doesn't indicate that I was absent from the meeting. I don't know if that matters. Is that, is that the correct way of doing it? It's more of a question. I'm sorry, I should have done this in advance of the meeting. We typically on other minutes do note that you're absent, so we'll make sure we amend the minutes. Okay. This you are absent at the very beginning. Yeah. The, the, the oh. call to order your notice meeting. You'll, you'll see it was absent. Yeah. And then, okay. And, and the same for me. You're both, yeah, yes. you're both you're both absent at the beginning, but under, under the votes, yeah. yeah. Great. Any other corrections or questions on the minutes? If not, I could take a motion. I move to approve the minutes. I'm going to abstain because I wasn't there. Okay. okay. Um, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Hefty? Yes. Councilmember Hasco? Abstain. Vice Mayor Warnikoff? Yes. Mayor Alves? Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, we're done with consent. Uh, Carter War is now here and is going to speak to us uh, in oral communication. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm sorry that the you know, internet connection wasn't working. Uh, tonight, I, I emailed uh, an issue that I wanted to get clarification on you know, as to the council's intent. Uh, you know, there's a new 50% rule that went into place you know, as of January 1st that passed just before the election last year. And there seems to be uh, something either intended or unintended by what's called the 50% rule. Uh, in the 50% rule, uh, there's a requirement for uh, remodeling, you know, a projects to evaluate the scope of their work relative to the floor area and the wall area, not one or the other. Uh, you know, it, the, the words are rather confusing and I wanted to make sure that we truly understand it. Uh, there, there's a document from the town, you know, that uh, you know, is shared you know, with applicants and, you know, we're one of the major design professionals in town. And it came to my attention today that it isn't floor area or wall area. 
you know, it's both because there isn't an and or, you know, it's to add them together. And if, if so essentially if 25% of the wall area and 25% of the floor area are affected by a project, that could be the same 25%, but they're added together to result in a project that by the town's evaluation would be a new building. I don't believe that that was the council's intent. I do believe that the council's intent was that it really, that this 50% rule truly represented 50% impact on the building rather than some arbitrage that, you know, that creates a, a kind of a, a double whammy, as I mentioned in my email, you know, of, of adding 25% to 25% to get to 50% which you know, would far exceed what I think your intent was. So I've used my time. I know you can't talk about this, but you know, hopefully you can agendize it and let me know, you know what, what the real intent was. Because this document goes into a, a lot of detail explaining you know, how, to, how to calculate the floor area, how to cal calculate the wall area, and then goes on to explain that you have to add those percentages together not the impact of the, of the project, but the percentages. And I, that really is pretty strange. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Carter. Um, for, the, for the mayor, I just note that um, I just discussed uh, with the assistant uh, town manager having our interim planning uh, director get back to the speaker um, to clarify um, that document and perhaps consider whether it needs to be revised. Great, thank you. <clears throat> With that, we conclude oral communications and we can move on to our regular agenda, which has one item, which is the uh, updated electronic communications policy. I believe Town Attorney Engberg is going to present this one. Go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I'm uh, asking this uh, town clerk to uh, share. I've got a short presentation tonight. Uh, and then I'll just note that uh, we did receive um, one item of written communication, public comment on the draft um, electronic communications policy. And I thought that was, those were really thoughtful comments. And so what I did is, so in addition to the, the short presentation I have, I actually have a red line document that um, incorporates some of those recommended changes that I thought we could just go over this evening. Um, if the council is ready to take action tonight, it may. Um, otherwise, if there are you know, enough revisions, um, the council could also consider um, you know, providing further direction and I could bring it back perhaps on the consent agenda if there's, you know, a uh, uh, consensus on, um, on the policy language. So, um, all right, so Jennifer, is it ready to, ready to go? Um, so with background, uh, I came to you on July 12th, at council meeting uh, to do a study session on uh, an electronic communications policy and sort of the, the genesis of that yeah, if we can do presentation mode, um, was that, you know, I, I was pretty new at, uh, to the town, I guess I still am, but uh, when I uh, joined the town, um, there had been um, some discussion in the community about uh, the use of social media by elected and appointed officials, um, as well as um, the town had received a, a number of sort of rather voluminous Public Records Act requests um, involving requests for electronic communications. So. It, uh, oh, and the town also received um, a, a concern from a resident, um, a cease and desist um, uh, letter under the Brown Act uh, regarding social media use. So it seemed like a, a good time to sort of evaluate policies. Uh, so as just in terms of what we're talking about here, um, electronic communications cover uh, email, texting, and social media. Those are the primary things we're talking about. And it implicates, um, primarily two state laws, um, the California Public Records Act and the Brown Act. Those are the two primary laws at, at issue. So in terms of, of timeline here, um, so after the, we actually learned after we had that July 12th study session that it turns out the council actually already has some um, policies on the books um, regarding electronic communications. So, um, uh, and, and, you know, ideally we would have found those before the meeting, but, um, the town clerk, I think it just started that week. So we, we dug in after the meeting and, and discovered that lo and behold, there actually 
is a 2009 um, council correspondence policy on the books. And that has to do with how to distribute council correspondence. It talks about um, printing out um, all public records um, as part of the, the town's uh, records retention practices. Um, and that is not, um, not necessarily recommended policy in just in terms of, of saving paper anymore. Uh, it has uh, practices around how to respond to Public Records Act requests um, that are rather dated. Um, for example, that 2009 policy talks about how when the town receives a Public Records Act request, um, the clerk is to notify um, everyone on the council uh, about that. And um, in, in reality, most, most requests are pretty routine and can be handled readily at the staff level. That was the 2009 policy, and there's also a 2010 policy um, called the Personal Computing Devices Policy, and um, that sort of reflects a time when it sounds like the town actually occasionally um, issued uh, personal computing devices to council members, um, and it assumes that council members download agenda materials um, from the web as opposed to accessing materials on the internet during council meetings. Um, and then really interestingly, um, for me anyway, that policy also prohibits council members from texting or emailing uh, during public meetings except for family emergencies, um, which is actually what the council talked about um, at the July 12th meeting, but it turns out there is already that, that policy on the books, but it only applies to council members. So one thing I wanna discuss with you all tonight is whether um, there's a desire to extend that to uh, commissioners and committees or whether that should just continue to apply to the council. Um, so fast forwarding to 2020, August 2022, um, the council adopted a texting policy for public meetings. Um, that uh, policy uh, resolved, settled um, Brown Act litigation and generally um, prohibits uh, council members, uh, committee and commissioners from um, uh, doing any private text or email communications among other members of that um, committee or commission um, during public meetings. Uh, it doesn't address um, social media or um, or address communications um, outside of, of during those public meetings. Uh, so then in um, July 12th, we had the study session. The council looked at a few other sample policies. Um, we looked at Saratoga's, um, Los Gatos, and uh, San Jose, a sort of a range of different policies that, um, that jurisdictions have adopted. And uh, there was a, a fair amount of public comment that evening, um, good feedback and also good feedback from, uh, from the council. So what I did is I did my best to try to incorporate that feedback um, and then also looked at those older policies to see what um, still made sense to include. Okay, so next slide. All right, so this um, updated policy is sort of generally speaking, it would um, supersede the 2009 and 2010 policies. Um, would propose to maintain um, that 2022 texting policy, although there is the option to, to expand it a bit um, beyond what would be required by the Brown Act, but um, that would be a policy call for the council. And generally speaking, it applies to the town's um, Brown Act bodies. Next slide. All right, so key features, um, I would say sort of in, in general, it doesn't, there are very few changes that would be imposed by this new policy. It really is intended to just document existing practice. Um, there are a couple of potential changes that would be for, um, for consideration um, this evening. So um, features, key features, uh, it, it directs that town council members um, receive town email accounts, that already happens. Um, Commissioners and committee members, on the other hand, um, use their personal accounts. That's um, the current practice. Uh, there is um, a, a policy option in this draft that talks about, well, if they're using their personal email accounts, then how do we um, document and maintain um, you know, records of their emails? Um, if they're copying a staff person or a council liaison, then they are sort of in the system. Um, however, if, they're, if they are not, there um, is a discussion in, 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 based on option in this policy to copy a town alias email um, address. <laughs> um, another key feature prohibiting e-communication by a quorum, that's existing law, that's um, uh, existing law in practice. Uh, it also would propose to expand the 2022 texting policy 
um, basically no e-communication during during public meetings by council members, commissioners, um, or committee members, with the exception for family emergencies. Um, and this is this is similar to the 2010 personal computing devices policy, um, except there would be an option to extend that to committee and uh, commissions and committees. Next slide. Uh, includes Public Records Act procedures for um, obtaining e-communications, including uh, texts and social media. It does away with the, the, the policy that the whole council needs to be notified whenever we get a PRA. Um, it retains a 2009 um, policy regarding um, making sure there's a warning on the town website that communications made to town officials may be public document, uh, may be public document and subject to disclosure. Um, this is you know, a little bit tangential to the main focus of the of the policy, but it it, it is it was part of the 20, 2009 policy, and we actually do have that warning on our website. So I just you know carried that forward. Um, one thing I said doesn't address that came up in the July twelfth um, meeting was um, the topic of of posting um, videos of of committee and commission meetings on YouTube. There was a fair amount of discussion on that. Um, I did not attempt to tackle that topic in this policy. It's a little bit out of my um, depth, I would say, um, but I would say this is something that, um, you know, we can continue to work on with um, the town manager and staff. All right. Um, so the next slide is actually the sort of a summary of some of the public comment that we got. Um, this was from um, uh, Ronnie, um, Thank you. Um, who who gave some written written feedback, and this is a sort of summarizes it. And I, I really thought it was helpful, so I'm um, going to just go to go through it um, uh, quickly here, and then we can kind of look look at it, maybe a potential um, suggested edits. Uh, uh, he suggested um, deleting an unnecessary definition of um, personal computing device. Computing device. I would agree with that. That was carried forward from an old policy, but that term isn't really used other than in the recitals. So I think it's super, superfluous. Um, there was a comment about um, clarifying the definition of social media platform. Um, if you recall, um, there was a fair amount of discussion um, at our study session regarding whether to use the definition of social media platform that is in AB 992, um, which is the state law um, that uh, sort of helped try to help clarify the Brown Act um, with respect to social media use. Um, but the definition in state law is uh, somewhat narrow in that it um, excludes sites that are moderated sites. Um, the, so I actually didn't use that definition because there, there seemed to be um, consensus at the, at the last um, meeting uh, that we would want this policy to cover um, moderated sites as well. Um, so not only sites that are unmoderated like Twitter and Facebook, but also cover sites like um, PV Forum and Nextdoor, which are um, moderated sites. So I, um, what I did with that comment is I would recommend a clarification of the definition. Um, so it clearly would include online forums as well as publicly accessible technologies. Um, so that was that, was that, uh, that comment there. Uh, the, the commenter also uh, requested um, that we specify um, the town alias, um, and that's actually not in the policy because we want to get your feedback and then I'll work with staff to get, to get if we want to go, go with that um, direction, we can set that up at the staff level. Um, there was a comment, a good comment about um, making sure we accommodate um, Brown Act buddies, which are allowed under the Brown Act. This is when you have uh, less than a quorum, um, so generally speaking, two uh, uh, council members who may communicate um, on a specific topic, um, and they, because they're not a quorum, they are not violating the Brown Act. So the the draft policy language, I, I will say this is one part where I, I borrowed from another city, from Saratoga, um, their, their language is a little bit more, more strict on this topic, and I don't think it based on the comment and, and now my my experience working here, I think it um, would be better to soften that uh, soften that policy language a bit. And actually it turns out that there was some language in the, I think it was, I can't remember, the 2009 or 2010 policy that um, I think we might want to sort of go back and revert to. So I'll show, I'll show that to you in a, in a moment. 
um, the commenter noted that one of the sections was kind of duplicative. Sections um, three, three F and um, three G were rather duplicative. So I'm going to propose sort of combining those into one. Um, and then lastly, there's sort of an important, you know, the important policy question for you all, which is um, this question about whether to prohibit um, e-communications um, during meetings, with the exception for the family emergencies. Um, this is turns out is already the policy for the council based on the um, the older uh, the 2010 policy. But is the council um, interested in expanding that to apply to commissions and committees as well? Uh, this was discussed at the July 12th meeting. And um, there did seem to be consensus about, um, you know, folks should focus on the task at hand and, and not um, do e-communications during meetings. But I watched the video today and I don't think we really drilled down into the specifics of whether we were talking about the council or also committees and commission. So we can um, sort of dive into that uh, tonight. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and bring up the red line, if you don't mind, Jennifer. So let's take a moment to switch to switch over. This is why I asked Jennifer to do it because I would probably mess this up. <laughs> yeah, just really maybe make it a little bit bigger. Cool. I'll have to go ahead and scroll down to the red line. So the first one is just in the definitions. Um, and I, it looks like there's a little bit of a screen delay so you have to click on the line on the left and then it'll actually show the inline great right, thank you yeah so this first one is just um i do agree that this definition is not necessary because this term is only used in the recitals um it was a carryover from the 2010 policy, but um, is a little bit of a, um, it was, was not necessary for this. So I'm, I recommend deleting it. Um, in terms of the definition of social media platform, if you can read this, I had borrowed language from um, the town of Los Gatos um, because it actually expressly referenced um, uh, ex publicly accessible technologies um, used to publish and or share information using the internet examples of social media include, and it included um, uh, Nextdoor as one of the examples, um, which is a moderated site. And so I thought that was a good um, uh, definition to use. Uh, but I, given the comment, I think that maybe not, wasn't entirely clear um, that this is, was intended to be broad. So I did recommend um, uh, including in the definition online forums. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as publicly accessible technologies. So that's intended to cover sites like Nextdoor and PB Forum that are moderated. So let's scroll down. Okay, and then this, um, uh, this next one has to do with um, the e-communications by committees and commission commissioners. And this is in the event that we get a Public Records Act request for um, communications by um, members of those, of those bodies. Um, which doesn't happen that frequently, but you know, somewhat occasionally. And uh, the idea that was discussed at the last meeting was, well, um, if there's no staff liaison uh, to that committee, um, that would therefore, if the staff liaison, then, then um, you can copy, and it, typically they do copy the staff liaison uh, for any communications. Uh, and that staff liaison, you know, of course, has a town email address that sort of gets into the system. Uh, there was a question about, well, um, what is the town alias address? And you know, we are still working on it, but I would recommend that we, um, you know, I, I would recommend it, including a change here that um, states that the, the email should copy um, a town email address. Um, really anyone is fine because that gets it in the system and that could be a staff person, a council liaison or an alias 
um, such as like we have an alias, I think it's called Town Center at PV, sorry, sorry at Port, thank you, at PortolaValley.net. Um, but if this policy goes forward, we'll have to decide at a staff level whether we want to have a specific alias for committees um, just to keep it a little bit more organized, I guess. Uh, okay, so going on to the next one. Um, so this next one um, has to do with um, uh, the the Brown Act buddy issue. And so my proposed language would um, uh, accommodate more clearly um, Brown Act buddies um, and would note that electronic communication should not be sent um, by a council or uh, commission uh, class committee member to more than one other council or committee member um, uh, concerning town business and should never be used to form or attempt to form a consensus on an issue within the town's business. Um, this is pretty much carried forward from your um, 2010 policy. Um, however, it what I did was I added um, committee and commissioners to that policy. Um, so I don't think this actually changes anything about the current practice. Um, but it does, um, you know, more expressly state um, what the what the rule is, and like I said, um, uses uses language that's that's already you know adopted policy. Okay, and then going forward, um, this is the note to that uh, G uh, is um, duplicative, um, and so I propose to delete that. Um, I think uh, the reason, Sarah, this was from Saratoga, I will say, I think the reason they had um, two policies that pretty much said the same thing was that their definition of social media platform was narrower. It was right out of the state law, AB 992. So they had to have another policy that covered online forums. So with an expanded definition of social media platform, I think we can just cover this material in one paragraph. And let's see if there's anything else. It might be the last thing, actually. Okay, so that's the last thing. So that was a, that was kind of a lot of in the, the weeds stuff, but I did just want to go over that because all of those comments um, were really um, were really helpful. Um, so that's it for my presentation. And um, just to summarize, I think that the two kind of you know proposed changes we have here um, in this policy it would change sort of how we're doing business uh, would be one um, whether we want to. Um, uh, require our committee and commissioners to make sure they're copying a, a town email address um, when they communicate via email. Um, and the second one um, being whether um, during committee and commission meetings, um, uh, members of the committee can do any, you know, texting and emailing during that meeting. Basically, whether you want to expand um, the policy that applies only to council at this point to committees and commissions. Those are sort of the two policy questions for you. Um, everything else is, is really an attempt to clarify existing practice. Uh, but if I got anything wrong, obviously we can, we can, we can change it. And like I said, if, um, I think this is probably enough changes to, um, want to bring back the item, um, to a future meeting, showing the red line and a clean copy, um, for consideration and, and you know, adoption, if that's the way the council wants to go forward. Great. Thank you, Catherine. So we will start with council questions for staff and we'll take public comment and then we'll come back for discussion of those, including the questions that, that attorney, our town attorney has raised. Are there questions from the council right now about this? Uh, Mary, do you have any specific questions? I'm just a little uh, confused uh, whether legally from the Brown Act point of view, there can be a difference between the committees and the commissions and the council and, and why that is and, and is it going to confuse people when they go from committees to commissions and uh, anyway? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So the policy that you have on the books right now that applies to council that prohibits council from texting or emailing during meetings with the exception for family emergencies, that goes above and beyond the Brown Act. So um, you can choose to have your committees and commissions go above and beyond the Brown Act in that respect or not. So why did we choose to go above the ground? Well, that was in 2010, so I, I don't know um, the, the you know, genesis for that, for that decision. 
but my the I guess I well I guess I, one thing that is a okay. is a, a it was a long time ago, but I will say the recitals of for that policy do talk about. Um, I'll just read it out loud so you it's helpful here. Um, it says whereas the town council is required to make decisions on a variety of matters impacting the town of Portola Valley and its citizens, and the council recognizes the importance of paying attention during town council meetings and focusing on the task at hand. So I think that's. Yep. That's the answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I if you can pull up the text of the that you just showed, um, it may be helpful. Yeah, yeah the red line. Um, so in the purpose section, it said the Brown Act provisions are not of this policy are not intended to cover non-legislative bodies such as committees that advise a single decision maker or are appointed by staff. Are those the only exceptions? Because that language seems to say we're trying to carve out committees that are kind of not Brown Act, <laughs> essentially. And I, since you're carving out, you're trying to say, oh, but you can talk to your Brown Act buddy and presumably a subcommittee. I'm kind of wondering about that last few lines there, the however, the Brown Act provisions are not intended to cover. Um, do you know why that's there? Yeah, so I added that um, because there is um, work being done um, by the committees themselves to consider having some of them um, transition to mm -hmm. being non-Brown Act committees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was just trying to be clear that um, if uh, that happens in the future, that this policy um, sort of contemplates that and, you know, is clearly not intended to to cover them. Right. And, and that I get conceptually, but there's only two listed here, two exceptions that advise a single decision maker or are appointed by staff. Is that the whole universe of potentially non Brown Act committees or is this? a subset of something that we need to make larger to avoid unintended application. Those are intended to be examples um, such, you know, such as um, it, you know, if, if this seems confusing, this sentence could also just be deleted. Um, oh, I, I don't yeah. mind it. Yeah. I, the, the, these are just questions about your intent yeah. and, and where it came from. And so the such as, you know, if this is only exemplary, um, we might want to make it clearer, for example, committees that advise or take out such as, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, right. It, it, stop it after body. Like that might be yeah. a way to. Yes, good suggestion. I agree. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't think anybody's, a month from now, I'm not going to remember what a non legislative body is. I mean, it's just it's helpful for me to have some example of it. I, I don't know. Right. My only worry is it's limiting on what we like. Those are the two examples. So maybe the such as we can work on, including but not limited to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Yeah. And these these are actually questions I wasn't trying to get ahead Sorry. of the process. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. Then. So in B, there's a statement, council members shall keep a record of all e-communications other than email communications. So the text and social media. I don't, this isn't for tonight, but how? Like if, I don't know how to comply with that. So it's okay to leave it alone, but if we all wanna know how we're gonna comply, I will have a follow-up question on that later uh, because I'm not a big social media or texter, so for me, it's not a problem, but I think a lot of people will want to know, what do I have to do if I post, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's more of, you know, think about it point. Um, D. Oh, that you had changed it there. So I did have a question about the new language. You took out should never take place during a noticed public meeting. 
and that didn't seem necessary to the major point, I think. So was that, you, you thought that was redundant? It yeah. was redundant. Um, and, okay. and I believe this was a, this was a public comment and, and I thought a good one um, that we already have another policy that talks about not using e-communications during public meetings. And so there was no need to um, include it here in D. Although from my perspective, part of what we're trying to do is both comply with the Brown Act, but also provide assurance about what we're doing during the meetings when people can see us mm -hmm. on, on YouTube. Um, so I will have some comments on that later. Uh, we can leave that alone. And you took out for informational or procedural purposes as well. So is that also covered in the other? Th this one uh, seemed a little bit um, bureaucratic to me honestly, um, uh, that, you know, to, to require, um, uh, well, again, for the Brown Act buddies, um, those communications are generally not simply, you know, informational procedural, but are actually substantive. Um, and then in terms of, you know, having to state, you know, for racial purposes only do not respond, that seemed a little bit bureaucratic. Um, and actually there's a really, there's a kind of a technology fix for um, the do not respond is when communications are sent to, you know, a full council, a full committee, um, the committee members can, can simply be BCC'd. Uh, and that way there's no concern about, um, you know, a reply all. And so, so those, those just seemed um, unnecessary. Um. Uh, in E, it says telephone calls or text messages from family members. I don't know, is there a definition of family? Because I can see if someone's babysitting and there's an emergency. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if family members is a little too limited when you already have urgent family matter later, which I would think... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, exactly. We've got police. <laughs> Get more. Um, right. Yeah, I think there's a there's yeah. a fix for that. Yeah, that that's no, if that's, that's consistent that's with your intent. Yeah. Better language, yeah. yeah. Okay, then I am getting to the last two, H. Um, request for disclosures. I think you left this alone. Maybe not. Um, this H, actually it's under the Public Records Act, so now that you've deleted one, it's G. now in G. G. And request for disclosure shall be submitted to the town clerk. Do we need that sentence here? because this is about us conducting meetings and what we can and can't do. This is kind of telling the public where to submit a public record. I don't know. I, I think you're right. I think, I think that is um, uh, a little bit outside of the main focus. Yeah. It doesn't offend me, but it's, yeah. a, it's not the That's right fair. place yeah. to find it. And we have that information on our town website in terms of the procedures yeah. for um, submitting a PRA request. And then the last one, compliance with the policy, is there a reason why we need that? Or is that like a legally operative, necessary? Um, this, uh, there, there's no legal reason to have this. This, this is your choice, um, okay. uh, but it's just, you know, I think making, making it clear that it's um, the response that, you know, the town attorney is not gonna be policing this, but um, uh, that it's the responsibility of individuals. Yeah. It, it, to me, it's inherent. I, I can go yeah. either way. Okay, thank you. Sarah, questions? I don't either. Uh, we will move. To, I'll take public comment on this item. Uh, Ronnie Krasinski has his hand up. Ronnie, uh, thank you for your email comments, and please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Um, <clears throat> 
on the uh, on the definition of the social media, I guess it's still a little bit unclear to me if if the intention and if the the way it's written if it includes um, private email lists. Uh, for example, could be like an email list for Westridge uh, residents only, or just you know any other private. <clears throat> email list, make PV great again, you know, whatever it might be. Um, uh, so, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, just you could consider and maybe clarify that. And then on the um, <clears throat> on the, the policy question, uh, I guess I just wanted to reiterate my opinion that I, I would disagree with kind of going beyond what is legally required by the Brown Act. And then our 2022 uh, texting policy, uh, in terms of um, in terms of you know what e-communication is allowed during meetings. Um, I, I mean, there were kind of comments to the effect that the intention is to sort of that people should not be texting during meetings; they should be paying attention, which you know generally i think everyone would agree with but <clears throat> you know i think people also should not be browsing the internet or reading a book or whatever but you know we don't we don't have um laws and ordinances about those and i don't think we need them i think you know our volunteers are dedicated and they are paying attention during meetings um so i think if you want something like that you could just put it in a handbook guideline or something like that i think putting it here makes it kind of onerous and intimidating for committee members. Um, and um, I guess if you keep it in like specifically about like, you know, family emergencies. So one thing like, I mean, I often get a text like when are you gonna be home, which is not necessarily an emergency. And the stipulation as it's laid out is that you have to leave the meeting to reply to it, where, you know, I, I might easily just quickly send a reply from my computer that I'm typing on anyways. Um, and I think that's, you know, much less disruptive than actually having to leave the meeting. Um, so yeah, thank you. Right, and thank, thank you, uh, Catherine, for um, uh, sort of uh, uh, reviewing those comments that I had so diligently. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Ronnie. Okay, next up is Karen Batra. Karen, go ahead. Hi, um, sorry for um, submitting my comment so late. Um, I usually try to be much earlier. Um, I just want to talk a little bit more about saving the e-communications that aren't emails. It's pretty relatively straightforward to save um, emails, but it's quite hard to save text messages and all the different platforms that we have today. I mean, some people use WhatsApp, something else, and you know, maybe they have an Instagram friend in town or it could be so many different ways. And I just don't think if we don't clarify how we're going to um, ask these people to save it, I just I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, so it's kind of like putting the cart before the horse. Uh, and it might be sort of easier to select a set of options that you can only use regular texting or I'm not sure I haven't really thought through it, but I'm just concerned that if we make a policy about all e-communications, um, it will just kind of all fall through the cracks. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Um, we have one more hand raised. It's Rita Combs. Go ahead, Rita. Hi, thank you for taking my comment. Um, I missed the beginning of the meeting, so I'm not sure if uh, when this uh, meeting started, if it was talked about why this conversation um, came to the top of the list um, about a council member showing their uh, screen and, and with a chat that had different issues going on that had been um, during a meeting, during a wildfire preparedness meeting, and, uh, and also another council member uh, making comments on the PV forum. And I, I do find it, um, odd that the PV forum would be okay, especially since the PV forum is moderated by a town committee person, um, that it's it's not equal and uh, it has been shown to this particular council 
uh, that's sitting now, uh, that it is not uh, just open to the public and there are people that are uh, don't get to read it or don't bother reading it. And, you know, it looks like we've had a couple of communication policies in the town. I don't know if, uh, if it's part of the training for new council members, new commissioners, new committee people, uh, new volunteers in the town, if they are educated about this communication policy, and if there's any proof, there was one in the packet, I guess the last communication policy, but it was not signed. I noticed that the previous one had been signed, but this one was not signed. So maybe somebody couldn't find the signed copy in the, um, you know, in, you know, in the documents that are saved by the town, but was that one ever signed? And, uh, and how have, you know, the council members that are here been trained on it and what kind of training has been given to the, um, you know, to the committee members and other people and how will that change moving forward if a policy, a new updated 2023 policy is then put into the system? Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Uh, Carolyn Bertongan has her hand up. Carolyn, go ahead. Good evening. Just like Rita, I missed part of the conversation, so I apologize if I missed something. But um, it's all about an honor code. And yes, um, I really appreciate the town council to really uh, address this issue because we have reported over the years that uh, people left their phones on and they reported, oh, leave your phone on, we will text you when they were recused. And I think of the Stanford uh, Wedge pro um, project uh, that happened. We also had a former council member who said, hey, why don't you do the blind communication, the BCC, because they cannot tell. I'm sorry, this does not represent the values of Putola Valley. And um, it's sad that we have come to this. We want transparency and accountability. It's very simple. And it's, it's sad that we have to go to different steps to uh, revive our policies. Um, it's sad, but hopefully uh, th there will be a positive result and hopefully um, people will understand how the new policies will work and we will all um, abide by those rules. So thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, I see no other hands raised. Um, so I will bring it back to the council for discussion. Uh, <clears throat> I guess so, I, I could try starting. Um, my thought is that this policy should be an effort to make uh, all volunteers uh, as comfortable as possible with their drive to be transparent and communicative uh, instead of putting us all on pins and needles about who we can talk to or who we can email. We want it to be as clear as possible and we, we want to be able to be present in the meeting, including sometimes we need to use our resources. Uh, in order to, uh, to be functioning at the higher level. So um, I just wanna get the intent out there so that we, we don't confound ourselves in a bunch of intricate rules that, uh, that are just confusing, uh, which is kind of what's happened to me. I'm, I'm paralyzed by the very notion of trying to talk to somebody at this point. So um, I, I personally think that you did a great job. I'm happy with it. It's, uh, I understand the carefulness that you all have done. Uh, I did hear some things from Ronnie about whether we can, I think it's really important that we be allowed to share our, our opinions and thoughts and, and concerns with the community and that there uh, be a way to hear back from them because they got lots to offer and also we're supposed to be representing them. So if we can't if they can't even find out what the problems are and who, what the solutions that are being offered are, I think that's too bad. So I'm speaking 
basically in defense of the idea of being able to have a, 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 a list that you communicate with that anybody who wants to can sign up for or not sign up for your own personal subscriber list that you can communicate with. Uh, and they can take, you can take yourself off of that list or put yourself on it by, uh, and whether or not we can actually post uh, where to sign up for those subscriber lists um, on the town uh, site, that kind of stuff. Uh, but it, are we supposed to feel bad about reaching out to people or can we make it a way of feeling comfortable about reaching out to people? That's my, my, my big sort of discussion point around this, because of course everybody knows I have a subscriber list and I use it um, and I get a lot of positive feedback for it. Anybody who's interested in what I think uh, or what is going on can subscribe. And I think everybody does it. Diane Feinstein, Agnes, uh, uh, everybody has one of these lists that I know of in politics uh, and sends out um, their current thoughts. So I just didn't know whether that was in any way included in this or prohibited or what, because I want us to have more transparency, not less. Um, to, I can go ahead and try to address that question. So I I think the relevant policy that we would be looking at for the subscriber list like you described is um, in what I think is new section, well, no, section 3D. Um, this is uh, the the part of the policy that would, um, that would say electronic communication should not be sent by a council member to more than one other council member concerning town, bu town business. So um, for, your subscriber list, I would recommend not having more than one council member on that subscriber or list, or better yet, none. Yeah, not, right. That, then that's the only problem. Uh, yeah, that, that would be the, the advantages the of having uh, the source of those subscriber lists, if anybody else wanted to do it, on the town site would be that you could say that on the town website that know that there's no interaction between that list and and the other uh, in compliance with the that these this, this subscriber list is in compliance with the Brown Act. Uh, Mary, are you looking to have your if you had that kind of list? What's the relationship of what that list is to the town website? I'm a little confused. What well, it link just you're occurred. Making. I mean, it occurred to me that while we were talking that it it should be able to be a sponsored communication by the by the town. Not a prohib not a, not something that you feel jeopardized about doing, but supported with. I don't think that has anything to do with this. Yeah, policy. I don't think that. Fine, I got it. Separate thing. Yeah. Agreed. Well, she did. We're going to ask that. What it, what happens if somebody forwards that subscriber list to the rest of the council? Well. You can only use so much <laughs> with um, third parties. I mean, you know, we, we do the best. It's really no different than if um, a council member sends an email to a lot of their constituents and, and one of the constituents forwards it on to another council member. It's kind of the same thing, you know. So we do our best and you as a council member make sure that you don't violate the Brown Act and you know we hope the members of the public don't facilitate a Brown Act violation. Thank you. Um, um, Judith, do you want to make some, I mean, some yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Um, the part of what we're doing here is complying with the Brown Act and getting into the next level of details about how part of what we're doing is creating, frankly, trust in the public that there's not two discussions or three discussions going on during a meeting. So it, my comments are going to be filtered through that um, because if I see somebody texting at a critical moment in the discussion, I'm going to wonder about that as a member of the public. And I think that's a legitimate concern, which is why I think probably this pushes the limit of, uh, you know, don't be texting for non-critical stuff. That's my parallel high level phrasing for what, what you captured here. And I actually agree with that. I, I think it's important for people not to be taking care of their shopping list when they're supposed to be listening to the public. And I, I think it's super important for the council and the commissions 
if it becomes problematic for the committees that are Brown Act committees, I would want to hear, I mean, this isn't a one-stop shop. If, if these things become onerous, we should make them workable to Mary's point of inviting participation in committees is a value of ours. But I don't, I don't interpret this as revised as doing that. I do think there is a question, the private email list question that Ronnie um, asked, I think that might be the next level of, of detail. I, I, I'm personally not prepared to have an answer to that right now. I think um, I probably wouldn't expand this policy right here. I would do what we can that's covering the topics we've already discussed and see if we have a need to get to private email lists or, or next level. So I probably wouldn't expand to that. Um, uh, to, to Karen Vacher's question of how to keep copies of e-communications other than emails, I don't know. Um, if there is best practice we can borrow from other towns, maybe we look and see, or we decide not to address that in this one. Like I view this as a starting point and it's a great step forward. But if we're causing nail biting by people uh, like about how they're gonna get to comply, I think we should maybe back off a little bit. And I still have concerns about 3D and the deletions that you made. And I'm not terribly good at looking at red lines in real time and reacting. So that's <laughs> part of what I'm going through. Um, I, I do think that the deletions that were made about only for informational procedural purposes, um, I, I think that was actually permissive. Like you can say we're back in session now period or something like that, I think was the intent. So for me, that wasn't bureaucratic, the last sentence was, and I, I agree, I wouldn't, I wouldn't require that statement necessarily to be made. Um, but let me have one quick look here. Um, shall not be sent by, so what is lost here, I think is, should never take place during a notice public meeting because if you take that out, then the e-communications shall never be sent to, well, concerning town business. So I, I guess the bottom line is if it's okay with people, I'd want to have another look at D and see if I'm comfortable with, with those adjustments there because um, I'm a, a little worried some substantive, some useful substantive stuff would be there. Um, those are, and then I just want to double check the redundancy of F and G, but I'm I'm sure Catherine's done that. We're good. And if, if I could just respond to the um, regarding, you know, shall never should never take place um, during a noticed public meeting. Um, mm -hmm. Communications between two council members um, are already prohibited from taking place during a noticed public meeting by the 2022 texting policy. Um, so uh, that was my thinking. And then in fact, essentially it's, it's covered again um, in E um, because council members are not supposed to be texting um, or emailing uh, outside of family emergencies period during notice public meetings. So it's already kind of covered twice, I think. And so that was my, my thinking in terms of deleting okay. it. In D. And I'm happy to look at that again. I, I, I'm I just trying to react in real time. To it's, hard to, it's hard to do in real time. Thank you. Sir, yeah, I would say generally, I was also, as everybody has said, thank you, um, Ronnie, for your feedback and Catherine to you for incorporating it here for us tonight. I was comfortable in the whole of the recommendations um, that you put forward. I'm also comfortable with Judith, if you want to refine in particular that item D, um, working offline, I, I'm completely fine um, with, with that. Um, it seemed to me like you were asking for two specific policy related questions. Um, correct me if I'm wrong regarding the either the alias um, or extending texting to committees and commissions. And for both of those, um, my general feeling is that I think it makes sense as a guideline, but less so as a policy. Um, as, as has been said, it's, you know, we don't want to continue to further burden our volunteers. 
So that's my um, rationale um, for both of those. And honestly, I think that the alias is nice, but in reality and practice, it's, I don't know how reliable it's going to be that everybody always remembers so on and so forth. So I think it fits both of those fit more as a guideline. That's just my thought. Yeah, actually, I think I was, that was the other the question was, does this apply to committees? And I actually think that maybe yeah, as a guideline, but not as part of this policy. I like that, that, because it's. So I, I was saying guidelines in both. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, okay, committees for sure. I agree with you. And commissions, I, I hadn't thought about that distinction, but um, I mean, I'd be happy to hear more. Um, but I, I like the idea of using the guidelines um, for specifically for committees and possibly for the commissions. We could discuss that. And then um, the other question that just you just you were just saying, yeah, oh, yes. the alias. Um, Required I guess, versus guideline. Well. I guess my question is what's what's the like what's the easiest what makes the most sense in terms of making these things sort of really collectible i mean like sending them all to town center feels like that makes feel like whatever account if, if everyone includes one alias it feels like it takes one account just turns it into this big sort of repository that has to be searched you know it has to be searched by computer it can't be nobody's going to go through and look and so the question is does it make more sense to put like have a dedicated account just for Probably doesn't make sense for every community to have its own account because then that gets really confusing. But then yeah. it's probably this these are some committees at, at Portola Valley.net or something. I, I, I don't know the answer. I was just trying to think of, of what's in the um, That's my question to you is yeah. regardless of what the alias is called, and I agree there should be only one, um, do you think it should be required that committee and commissions always include it as a policy or as a guideline? That I think my understanding is that was the question. Correct. So that's the yeah, crux of the yeah, question yeah. Okay. right there. It feels like it ought to be the policy. It feels to me like it should like we should be very clear that we actually want that we're saying that we want all these things on the record somewhere. Um, I mean, to me, it's a question of making sure the process is easy. Like this is an option. If it somehow gets to staff, that would also count, right? So you could choose whether it's the staff or the alias that gets copied. But from my perspective, I'd far prefer to shoot off a copy to one of those and not have to go back through my emails um, and make sure that everything got in. So I would like it to be either or, um, as long as it somehow gets into our system more easily. I, I would do it as a policy, um, but you know, I'm, I'm pragmatic. What's going to happen if somebody makes a mistake? You know, I, I don't know where the dividing line between policy and guideline is really going to be. Uh, I think in practice, I would want that to happen more than less because then we're going to miss some communications because people delete their, if they buy a new phone, they delete their text. Um, it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, and then for what it's worth, I, I think the texting needs to be at commission level, absolutely. And honestly, part of the um, issues we've had in the past are with an ad hoc committee. So I think we need to have the texting policy apply to Brown Act bodies and to all of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just have a, um, a question. Uh, wouldn't it be appropriate if we just told our committees that all correspondence had to go through the liaison? No. And wouldn't that be, I and then that, that would that. be picked up? Yeah, the liaison for staff the committee. or no, the, the council? The, the council liaison. Council liaison. Well, it all has to go to a town email account. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, what, in other words, it, the idea of having the council liaison is it actually does include the liaison in the conversation, and it would be useful in real time to understand what was going on. Uh, and then if there was something really important, it would be brought to somebody else. Uh, so I, I guess what I would, this is what I would suggest. The policy should be that all communications with related town business must, be, must, must include a town email address. Mm -hmm. It can be the it can be staff, it can be council, or it can be this third thing. Just so that if there's you know if there's 50 emails that go back and forth on something, I'm really I don't have to, I don't have 50 emails that they could those you know 
if it's something that I'm actually a conversation I really need to be part of, I'm okay with it. But if it's something that they're talking about that I don't, need to, you know, two people are arguing about, you know, you know, the definition of of a, of a coast live oak that I don't need, you know, I, it's just it'd be nice for us to have. I I want to give us a little bit of a respite from you know the yeah. flurry of, of emails about some you know something that we don't need to be involved in. I'd say that the the what the the policy itself is is that we collect you know, make sure that it's all collected. The how is in the guidelines, and so that people have the option of using the council liaison or another another address. I'm worried about the pile up of discussions of, of live oaks on on, a, on, on the staff. <laughs> well, just to does not be staff. It has, it, it, just to kind of simplify our decision making process, we have two decisions right now. One is as we're just discussing this copying and alias one. So I'm hearing consensus from at least two. Um, and I don't, you know, on that, because you probably want to move to kind of figuring out for direction for these guys yes, on yes, each of those. Yes. So Mary, you're wanting me to answer what question? I'm, I'm in, sorry, which, I took over your role, which <laughs> well, are we talking about? The alias one. The alias just, question. So I, I made a suggestion in terms of how to handle the alias question. Does that make sense? So to summarize, it's a policy but it would be optional which way? how you get it into the town system, an alias, yeah. staff, or, 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 li sure. or liaison. Or liaison, okay. Yeah. I, I'm, excuse me. I'm, I'm, I'm relaxed about the subject in general. I just asked the town clerk to pull this up one more time. Um, this is subsection C yeah. and uh, the red line, because I kind of, also anticipated this issue was um, to have the communication include a copy to a town email address, um, mm -hmm. yeah. staff or council liaison or alias. It would really be up to the committee member. Yeah. Okay. I think this actually probably is yeah. appropriate. Perfect. Yeah. And maybe we provide some guidance in the in the handbook or something just so, they, so just to make it clear to people. Their Underscore it, yeah. 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 Um, one thought I had about Karen's, Karen Batra's question was, you know, if it's some other thing like Instagram or something, I mean, you have to go to, you have to go to quite some length to, to delete things from those accounts in my experience. Like it's, it's pretty hard to actually go back and like, if you, if, if it's there, it's there. And if, if it's sort of, it's reached enough people, it's sort of, I mean, like, I don't think people have to actually like cut and paste their, you know, copy and paste their, their, uh, their Instagram posts or anything like that. I think that, that, People understand that if they post something on some other, you know, some social media that's not kind of our conventional social media, they they should understand that they may be asked to go back and find it, or maybe it may be subject to search in the future. I think it's I think it's easy enough to find things on those if, if you know if you know what you're looking for. Um, I'll just share with how I've seen this done in in other Public Records Act requests. Um, Screenshots tend to work, um, just like you can screenshot a text message, you can screenshot um, a social media post. Yeah. And uh, this is this is a challenge. I've actually heard there, there are companies out there that um, are, are helping jurisdictions apply the Public Rec Records Act uh, with respect to social media posts and they have some way to store them. And I, I don't really understand the technology, but, I, but this isn't intended to be super fancy. So it, all it requires is to um, you know, keep a record, um, I think really you can go back and screenshot your social media posts pretty easily, um, as well as, you know, text conversations, you know, um, you know, unless you can get a new phone and then get deleted, but um, generally speaking, it's, it's not intended to be um, you know, super uh, you know, laborious. Yeah. Um, that was just my, I, I'm not overly concerned. My one concern would be maybe we should encourage people not to use Snapchat or something. It's just, it's like, I, I don't know if we have to go as far as making it a policy, but I think we should at least make it clear at some point that please don't use, you know, a medium that is specifically designed not to be not to, not to leave a record. Um, I don't know if there's an easy fix for that or like that, you know, language. I just I think this can be addressed in you know trainings for committee members. I um, really once you learn about the Public Records Act, the purpose of it, um, I think that is sort of key in terms of this is making decisions about how you communicate. Understanding the policy, yes. Okay. Um, so I think we've I think we've I think we've arrived at a consensus on the that retention question about the, the various emails we can use. And then I also think we maybe maybe the consensus is that we're we the supply the, 
the no texting during meetings applies to the council and the commissions, but not committees. Oh no, you want well, you said all brown. I applies, personally but. think we've had some issues on, it, especially some of the ad hoc committees are super important to the town's work. So I'm concerned about that. So I would make it apply. And and I I, I don't think we're going to be policing you know every single committee meeting to see who's texting, but I think. I also don't see a reason to need to affirmatively have an exception there either. That, and I could be in the minority here, but that's my view. What do you think, Mary? I think consistency is also helpful. It means that you learn what got you come up in the community, you get one way of doing it, and then you stick with it, and you get in the end meetings, and you, you do it. Um, so. Again, simplifying for me is, is really important, particularly if it's so different from the way we normally function where we're doing five things at once. True. Yeah. Uh, that it, uh, and, and also I think, I, I, I would just say, and this may sound off track to everybody, but this is all new to a lot of people and nobody should feel guilty about having done anything in the past or, or uh, what it, that it just, we all learn as we go along, and and all of a sudden there's, you're looking at, uh, you're looking at a whole other set of, of ways of communicating, and and no surprise that you're doing the best you can with. I think my only concern is just the increased um, complexity that we put on our volunteers, and I hear. Our, and as part of my role during the committee of committees process, that is definitely something we hear a lot about. So this is, yeah, <coughs> making it making it work. You think that's making yeah. it work? By, yeah. So, so I'm not. So I'm just going to share that. I'm not going to vote against it. By, ask, by asking them not to text, you think that's yeah, it's too much like to ask. Yes, another. You know, these are some yeah. of these are like casual. You know, these aren't. You know, but They're maybe eventually groups. all these will opt out of being a brown act committee. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Some of them, I'm sure, certainly. Um, I don't have a super strong opinion about it. I just wanted to okay. share that perspective. Okay. So, I'm not sure if I got um, direction on that last. I don't know if we have a consensus. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, we've made a few different statements there. The consensus is yes and yes. Is to include it. It applies to all the committees. It applies to all Brown Act bodies. Mm -hmm. And everyone is being, is, and, we're, and we're making a policy that everyone retains their documents via a town email address. Okay. Great. Well, that in that case, then I do have the direction I, I need. Um, my plan is to um, bring this back with a red line um, and a clean version. And of course, if if you have any individual um, thoughts uh, between now and the next, I think I put. I, well, I'll I'll talk to the town manager about when to bring this back. But I, I it's pretty straightforward at this point. Um, and you know, feel free to, to share any additional input that you might have. Um, but hopefully, we'll we'll get to the finish line on at the next meeting. Okay, so on the next meeting, this will be on the agenda and what we would hope would be a final form at that point. That would be the goal. Yes. Okay. I have a question. Are you anticipating consent? I, yeah. We have a really long agenda at the next meeting. So it be on the consent. Yes, I would that plan would to put it on the consent agenda. Is okay. everybody con well? We have some changes that we didn't finalize. I know, for instance, I, I don't remember the number, Judith, that maybe 3B was it? Yeah, I'm going to go back. If if you can send me the current red line, yes. and I can just work with you to just confirm if I think something's missing or not. I, I don't expect a big deal there. Yeah, I would say feel free to yeah. work with her. And, and yeah. you know, awesome. any of us are welcome to work with them. And then it, I, let's, I'd, I'd say let's put it on consent. It could always be yeah. told if, if something is, is enough that you need to. Sounds great. Okay. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so just, we have continued, we didn't, we're not taking the action, we're continuing this to the next meeting. So Correct, need, I have the we, direction that I need. We don't need to vote or anything. We don't need to, we don't okay. need to vote. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Uh, uh, item 4A, it brings us to item five, liaison committee and regional agency reports. I did not see any attached to the packet, but did anyone want to report on a meeting? Well, I had a bunch that I sent in to have a uh, meeting get on there. Yeah, mine got messed up. Okay. 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 So we're about a minute of time. Okay. Um, 
Sorry? Well, I could report on um, geologic safety uh, because there's one action point that they have asked for, uh, for us, from us for a while now, which was that in November, they'd like to be able to have an hour with the geologist at one of their meetings, uh, at their meeting in November. Um, and it seems a reasonable request. There are some questions, there's varieties of different faults that there, and none of them apply to the current, any of the current housing situation. They uh, just are things that they want to talk to the geologist about. And according to them, that's the way it's always been. There's a free communication between them. And this has been hardly free, but at least you get one, one at least one visit with the geologist. I don't know if that we have to okay. have an action about that, or uh, we can need to have a now. consensus. Or um, let's 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 talk about it offline. It seems reasonable. I just I think I've had both the colleagues memo on this subject, and I've also brought it up at every meeting that after the geology uh, committee and, and, and I, offline is not going to work. Well, it's not on the agenda, though. Well, it's not an option. Online is not okay. an option right now. So, okay. We'll, we'll figure out a way to move forward. Okay. Right. Um, I just want to acknowledge I am the SFO roundtable um, liaison, and um, I have been getting some reports just to acknowledge to the public of increased air noise. I will do my best to connect and see if, if uh, routes have changed or, yeah. uh, you know, generally what this, the situation that, that has changed is, if anything. So that's a placeholder for me to do homework on. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you guys. It, it's cyclical. It comes up every now and then. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, anything that you wanted to comment on? Okay. Um, there's one hand up. We will take public comment on the liaison reports. Well, I, 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 do, I have a couple of things for otherwise liaison reports. I wanted okay. uh, to just, because uh, everybody wasn't here last time about uh, the appointment of the ad hoc housing uh, element to say that we've been hard at work and looking at lots of options in terms of real estate and uh, and in terms of uh, agencies and we're meeting once a week with John Biggs to be able to keep ourselves on track to get things right. So, I'm, my slogan at the moment is uh, more agile responding to our housing And the inclusionary housing policy, Mary and I are working on that. We were also taking up Don Biggs' time, yeah. um, poor guy. Uh, <laughs> and we are uh, developing a work product that's based on the committee input, but also other jurisdictions, policies. And um, I don't know if it's the next meeting or some, okay. So we'll, we'll be looking to, yeah. Right. Give you something to react to. Okay, great. Thank you. And I, I guess I would just add that without the inclusionary housing uh, policy in place, we're having a hard time being very agile about our real estate, to, uh, about what we can do with real estate. Okay. So the sooner we get that done, the better. Understood. All right. Any other liaison reports? Uh, public comment on the liaison reports. I see one hand up, Carolyn Berton. Go ahead. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, um, Judy and Mary, uh, for communicating our uh, concerns. Um, there's a lot of things going on, and I hope you understood what we communicated even to tonight, this continues to be an issue. Um, there's so many questions uh, that we have accumulated, not just in the last three years, but five years. Um, and we hope to uh, make some improvements. So um, I'm, I'm very concerned about this new policy. I, I thank the, the legal counsel for the legal, uh, the, the attorney, town attorney for addressing this, but uh, even she is not aware of so many things that have uh, 
has passed through the years and uh, we hope we can communicate with her and, and express our experiences. Um, in regards to the airflow, uh, the airplane flow, yes. And it's a deep concern. We Portola Valley residents have fought this for several years, even with um, uh, Representative um, Ashu, because there are some certain limitations and uh, the, the uh, airport and the airplane association or whatever, you know, we get the runaround, but they use Portola Valley because we have so much open space. And we have fought this because it has changed our whole ecology system. So we have more rodents, we, the residents, do not want to poison the rodents because we know the importance of all the other um, wild birds and the birds who help us take care of the rodents, but it's a big issue. And yes, in gate, there is an increase. And we don't want to escalate this because we have fought this for many years. And yes, this is an ongoing issue and it has increased this year. Um, there's many topics that were addressed this year. Well, I'm sorry, not this year, but this meeting. And I hope the, town, uh, the, the new town manager will address them. Uh, we need help. Uh, town council liaisons have been very helpful, but there is a, an issue in effectiveness and we have the general plan, we have the municipal code, we have the charters, and somehow nothing gets done. So hopefully we have a new town manager who will help us in this, and I count on town council liaisons to support us in the effort. Because Carolyn, you're over time. Great engagement. No, I'm not over time. Yes, I you are. Address... You're over time. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, um, because he is, yeah, because he is uh, uh, out of the country right now. Um, our town manager is not, I believe, going to give reports. I'll confirm that real quickly because I know he's on listening. But I believe he was going to not give a report. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. That brings us to item seven, which is uh, adjournment. Do you need a motion? Motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you all. Good night.